Hello everyone, Max is here and today we're in a project DCS World Digital Combat Simulator and today we're gonna be doing landings, full stop landings and takeoffs from the aircraft carrier. For making this video I've been inspired by the guy on YouTube, uh, sorry for spelling maybe wrong, Robin Takelander. He is actually doing a lot of aircraft carrier landings with aircraft which are not supposed to be landed there and uh, he's taken off with the full load and everything like that for my video I decided to make it a bit different so I'm gonna split all the aircraft in DCS world in two categories the first one is going to be piston engine aircraft and uh, I've got them all well almost uh, the only one is missing is uh, Focke Wolf 190 A8 so I'm going to land all of those aircraft on the aircraft carrier deck and uh, I'm going to take off from the same position I have stopped with my landing roll. Let's start with Spitfire Mark 9. It's pretty interesting uh, aircraft. It does have aft CG which makes it interesting to fly. It's not unstable but it's aircraft with a neutral stability. So for me it makes it stall aircraft short take off and landing so we're gonna try it right now with this landing on the aircraft carrier deck during this low speed high drag approach difficult thing is to be able to see the aircraft carrier deck actually the point the spot you are heading to lucky me i'm flying in vr i'm opening my canopy leaning out of the cockpit and uh, skidding the airplane a bit to be able to see the spot where I'm, where I'm heading to. The good technique during such an approach is to correct your vertical pass uh, through the throttle movement, not, not putting the nose down and putting it up, it's uh, about just in throttle only. Right on spot, the first inches of the threshold, first inches of the deck. And here we are, we have stopped at the second wire. So beautiful textures. Here, beautiful textures of the beautiful Spitfire on the air carrier deck. So for the short takeoff, I'm going to leave my flaps down, fully down. I'm holding brakes, increasing power, releasing brakes, and trying at my best to control the heading of the aircraft. And now I'm lift up. And that was difficult to control the, you know, when you got a low speed and the, all those torques and propellers moments, you know, freaking your aircraft and uh, you just trying your best to control the heading and everything like that. Look at this, at the textures of this actually aircraft are actually amazing. Look at these drains, you can easily see leaks from the drains along the belly of your aircraft it's some kind of low pass hello guys and now what I'm doing I'm losing my air speed and once this once the speed is good I'm you know putting my undercarriage or landing gears and flaps down and performing another one approach you know guys just to prove you that it wasn't accidentally good one landing so I <laughs> that I can perform another one in a row. So anyway, uh, the same same thing. You can't really see what's happening, you know, behind the nose of your aircraft, and everything like in the first time. To sh you know, with <laughs> in this time I'm you know hitting the deck a bit harder with my tail wheel. So another one short landing, let's go for another one. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, the beautiful Yakovlev 52. I really like this external model of the aircraft, it looks nice. When I look at this, I can see the real one. I used to fly a lot Yakovlev 52 and even in this particular livery, I flew for this aerobatic display team, uh, the name of the team is the first flight. Uh, from the beginning, uh, since 2009, and I left at two, 2012. And yeah, this livery is pretty nice. It's so close to my heart. 
you know, I really like it. And uh, yeah, that was a nice time. So here we are again shooting another one approach on this air carry deck. And we've got our flaps down, our landing gears down, and as you can see probably from the cockpit, there is nothing you can see much in front of the nose. You know, like me, using VR, able to lean out to see where I'm heading to. What I'm trying to do is maintaining the low possible speed for this approach. And here we go. So short landings, a brake supplies, and we have stopped. Flaps up, let's go for takeoff. Holding brakes, releasing brakes, full throttle. So when what we are doing, we are just making a short turn around and shooting another one approach uh, probably better than the previous one we'll see how it goes and again during the approach I'm going to maintain the lowest possible speed for the approach it's slightly higher than 100 kilometers well I can't find myself maintaining such a speed during the real approach on this aircraft but this one is okay this this is not real and we are on the deck again the beautiful external model of the aircraft yeah I missed the time I flew this and now we are in the cockpit of I-16 or in Russian E-16 so the basically I or E in Russian stands for Istribitel which means fighter so basically it's F-16, the fighter number 16, <laughs> here we are, so the F-16 during the approach and I skipped the moment I've been, you know, putting my gears down because it's kind of long process, it needs you around 40, 40 revolutions, you know, of the crank to put the landing gears down and I can't remember exactly the, the uh, number of revolutions for the landing flaps. Normally you can see I-16 flying around the world, it's a uh, type 18, not the type 24 you can see right now, and it doesn't have landing flaps, that's why the landing distance is much much longer. So this one is uh, type 24 and does have landing flaps we'll see how it helps three point landing applying brakes i don't know about brakes in type 24 but the body of mine who flew type 18 told me that brakes uh, in i16 type 18 they are not hydraulically powered it's the same type of brakes we have in Yakovlev 55 or you have in your bicycle. It's just cables and you trying to stop wheels with your muscles. So it's not really powerful. So applying powerful brakes released and taking off. It's kind of short takeoff. Making a short turn around and shooting another one approach. And also I've been told uh, that the aircraft is not really flying without engine power. So you are landing at this time when you have retarded your power. And it's understandable, the I-16 doesn't have very impressive glide ratio. So the wind is small, the weight is high. Okay, we're shooting approach, trying to maintain speed as low as possible. Here we can see that the aircraft actually can fly a bit during the flaring, even with the low speed. It may be, it might be because of the flaps. Applying brakes. And by the way, textures are stunning. You know, the external model looks beautiful. You can understand which materials the aircraft is made of. 
And now we are in Pokey Wolf 190 D9 Doro. So I can't tell you much about this aircraft. So it's pretty much heavy. It does have high approach speed, higher than the previous aircrafts. But it does have really powerful engine though. So anyway, the aircraft is good. The visibility is still it's not enough for the aircraft carrier landing. What I'm doing, I'm skidding the aircraft a bit, leaning a bit to the left to be able to see the deck. Using the full flaps. Okay, it's landing flaps position. And you can see even touching just a few feet away from the deck, from the beginning of the deck, I'm still struggling with the putting this aircraft to the stop. And now it's not that much takeoff distance in front of me. So we'll try to take off from this position. We'll see how it goes. Well, the en engine is so powerful, so I'm struggling to maintain in my direction. And right now, after the liftoff, it's difficult to control the aircraft because of those huge moments of this powerful engine. I will leave my flaps and landing gears down. We'll make a short turn around for another one approach. Now, this one is not, is not easy. I mean, even if you're struggling with the visibility during the approach, you're still able to bring the aircraft uh, close to the three-point position before the touchdown and even doing that you've seen how much of the distance it took me to stop the aircraft so visually I don't really like this airplane I I find in a8 model of Focke Wolf is more like beautiful maybe than this one but the aircraft made for flying so we're flying it wow now it's flaring it's too long anyway we have to bring this baby to the stop whoop so for the next uh, okay, takeoff I probably wouldn't be able to take off from here. Okay, let's jump to another one. And now we are in Messerschmitt 109 K4, Kilo 4, or Curved, whatever they call it. So that's pretty nice aircraft. It's really powerful. It does have powerful engine, the good wing with the with the good flaps, with the leading edge slats and we can have really really slow approach speed during the approach on this aircraft so as you can see to maintain the low speed the low speed is possible we have to maintain our nose really high and we can't really see the aircraft carrier so the other thing is we don't we don't have ability to you know to slide the canopy down or backward or somewhere else so we kind of stuck in south inside the cockpit so i'm leaning my best you can see it here but in vr i'm leaning my best to the left or right and trying to ski the airplane a bit to be able to see the spot i'm heading to so trying to bring the you know lowest speed retarding throttle flaring two-point landing well with the hard tail strike first and we have stopped as i can see from here we've got plenty of distance for the takeoff and with this with this powerful engine it's not a problem at all we're going to be using full flaps down and the only one thing is difficult when you start in your roll and uh, airspeed is low you don't have any like huge authorities of the rudder and it's difficult to maintain directional control you're basically using the opposite brake and 
here we are we are flying again we'll try to make another approach you can maintain pretty low speeds with this aircraft because of the wind first of all the great aerodynamic and also the engine you know it can help you escape from difficult situation but anyway it can cause you some problems during the approach at the low speed when you're trying to escape with a powerful engine added in a lot of power and uh, you know in these moments that twisting you and you're just losing control and again flaring three point touchdown braking and still we've got plenty of the distance for the next circle let's go for another aircraft and here we are in the Christian Eagle 2 I used to fly this airplane for a while as a flight instructor this airplane is good for the starting in air biotech let's say for the beginners for fun uh, the cockpit is wide is really easy to get in comparing to PCS 2 for example well but this airplane is not that bad as uh, compared to the pits so but it's fine it's interesting to fly for fun and for you know starting in the air biotech so what I'm trying to do is uh, like a vertical maneuver I don't know how to say it in English and then I'm about to perform hammerhead hammerhead well you've just seen the lack of my aerobatic skills or oh, it's just a sim okay anyway let's turn around and bring this baby to the deck so the other thing in in, in a real world this airplane is difficult to bring to the stop after landing just because it has really high speed of landing actually this angle three point angle is pretty low in this aircraft lower than in you know in the pits so you have to land with the higher speed and uh, once you have landed those soft and you know flexible landing struts they're wobbling all around and you know having difficult to bring this top because in you have to maintain directional control while it's you know living its own life so it's but it's kind of a nice experience but it's the most difficult one I flew with the tail wheel let's say extra speeds different Yakov lifts um, I don't know even a Texan it's much more easier than this one but it also depends on of assembling so this one company Avia sells like a kit you have to assemble it it's by yourself and Christian Eagle I flew for example you have to maintain the good inch to the right to fly straight for forward without without banks without bank so it's kind of interesting now we have a uh, aircraft moving aircraft carrier moving and uh, a bit of the headwind so it's not a problem and now we are in the Mustang P51 the external model is great and the sound it's a rebuild or remade sound sounds great uh, I've read that they made a new sound for the Spitfire and this, for this Mustang which is good so and again we are having a high drag uh, low speed approach and having a problems with the visibility so I'm using VR to be able to see something just leaning left or right and it's a nice landing soft kiss landing with a three-point touchdown the airplane is heavy and the speed a bit high during approach so we need some time to bring it to the full stop for the takeoff we're gonna be using full flaps down increasing power pulling on brakes releasing brakes rising tail and taking off once we're in the air we're gonna bring landing gears up and flaps up we'll make a turnaround and a, a 
low pass over the deck and then uh, make another short approach to the deck. Well, external textures are really, really great. The sound, sound is, is good too. After the low pass, I'm gonna exchange my speed on uh, altitude. And uh, once the speed is good, I will release my landing gears down and uh, flaps down. And here we are, landing gears down, speed is about 110, flaps guns down. It's really great that this aircraft has such a nice flaps. Well, the thing is, it seems like they are not fully down, so it can affect my landing distance. So I'm trying to maintain lowest possible speed. Power to idle, fairing, and nice and soft touchdown, three point. So, thank you very much for flying with me today. It was a pleasure to be with you. Thank you very much. Hope to see you next time. Thanks for your time. Bye-bye.